Hi, this is a quick video introduction of the main parts of speech. Uh, it's something that I think it's important to know uh, when you're learning English or any language. Um, there are four main parts of speech, uh, the noun, verb, adjective, and adverb. That's true for any language, uh, any language that I know about. Um, there are other parts of speech, but these are the ones that I really want you to know and be able to identify uh, be able to change a word from one part of speech to another. So this video is intended to give you a quick introduction, maybe a review, uh, hopefully a review because you've uh, studied this before. So um, let's start with just reviewing these and then we'll look at some sentences as we go along. So uh, a noun uh, is often described as something that names a thing. Names a thing. Uh, could be a person, could be an object, could be an idea, could be a place. Um, in a sentence, grammatically speaking, it's going to appear uh, as a subject, or as an object, or as an object of a preposition, and in some other positions as well, uh, but it's the kind of word that can appear as a subject. Um, so if we look in, say, uh, sentence number two, uh, Ying is the subject of that sentence. Ying is the one who wrote the essay. So Ying is a noun. You can also see essay is also a noun. That's the thing that she wrote. It's actually the object of the verb here. So ying and essay are some examples of nouns. Nouns are also the kinds of things that could be plural. Not every noun can be plural. Uh, you know, take an s on it usually. Um, but they're the kind of words that can be plural. So uh, essay, essays, ying, yings. I guess you could have two yings in your class, right? So, um, nouns are the kind of things that can take a uh, plural S, uh, if they're count nouns. Um, not all nouns are count nouns, of course. Uh, let's look at verbs. Verbs, uh, people think, describe the action of the sentence. Um, every sentence should have at least one verb in it. Uh, in English, their verbs are the kind of things that take tense. Um, so you could have present tense, past tense verb, or a future verb with will. Um, so if we look at some examples here, is is the, the most common verb. Um, has written, we have a verb here in uh, perfect. We have a past tense verb here, past, and uh, she passed again, another verb there. Um, so if 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 you're not sure if something's a verb, think about whether you can make it into a past tense or a present tense. Um, okay, adjectives. Adjectives, uh, people think describe uh, things, usually describing nouns. Um, and there are two main places where adjectives appear in English sentences. Um, one place they appear is after a linking verb like is. Linking verbs are like is or seem or become. So one place you're gonna see it is somewhere after the linking verb. So writing essays is very hard. Hard is an adjective here. Um, it's coming after the linking verb. Another place you will, the other place you'll see adjectives is right next to a noun, uh, usually before the noun in English. So here we have a great essay. So it's saying what kind of essay it is. It's describing the essay. Essay is a noun, so we have adjective noun. You'll see that combination a lot, adjective noun combination. Um, adjectives sometimes in English, you could, you could add er or uh, est on the end of an adjective. So great could be greater or greatest. Um, that's one way to check uh, to see if you have an adjective. However, be careful because not all adjectives take er or est. Uh, adverb is the last major uh, class of, part, uh, of, of words. Adverbs uh, tend to modify or affect either a verb, an adjective, or a complete sentence. And um, they'll often tell you how something was done or the way in which it was done. Um, so let's see some examples of adverbs. We have one adverb here that's modifying an adjective. That's one thing adverbs can do. So very hard, could be extremely hard, or kind of hard. Those things are all gonna be uh, adverbs. Um, 
we have another adverb here, fortunately. And you can tell by this comma here that fortunately is modifying the whole sentence. It's telling you how this whole sentence happened or uh, in what way the whole sentence happened. Um, and then let's see, number four, we've got another kind of adverb. This is an adverb that modifies a verb. So um, how did she pass? She passed easily. She passed difficultly. Is that a word? Uh, she passed uh, happily. Um, so an adverb could be in any of those three positions, uh, modifying an adjective, modifying a whole sentence, or modifying a, uh, an adjective, or sorry, uh, a verb. And uh, one way you can sometimes identify adverbs is by the LY. A lot of English adverbs have LY in them. Um, you can see this one does and this one does. This one doesn't, so you just have to be a little careful there. Okay, so those are the main classes of, of, of parts of speech. There are other uh, kinds of uh, parts of speech as well. Uh, determiners or articles or prepositions or conjunctions. But those I'm less concerned with how you identify because actually linguists disagree sometimes over how to, how to classify those. Um, so I care more about that you know how to use those um, than is you can tell me what they are. But these, I really want you to know because sometimes you, you have to be able to change a noun into an adjective and put it in your sentence in the right place. And if you don't know what the noun is or what the adjective is, or you don't know what goes there, whether an adjective or a noun should go there, uh, it could be very difficult to choose the right word. Now, as a review, as a little quiz here, let's just um, go through these four sentences, try to identify everything we can. Uh, and uh, uh, this is a good practice. You can do this with any sentence. Um, try to identify main parts of speech. Sometimes I get some ones that I don't know. Uh, I can't really say what part of speech it is because the grammar is difficult or it's, it's uh, yeah, just a construction I haven't seen before. So you don't have to be perfect at this, but um, you should be able to play along. And these are pretty easy sentences, so hopefully we can do this together. So my recommendation is, uh, just as uh, your, one of your first assignments in GB asked you to do, is identify the subject and the verb of any sentence. You know the subject's gonna be a noun, you know the verb is gonna be a verb. So um, number one, where's the verb? Maybe we should uh, underline the verb. So let's underline the verb. This is, is that's the verb. Uh, let's go ahead and just uh, look at uh, yeah, let's find the noun, let's find the subject in this sentence. What's the subject? Writing essays. So the subject of this sentence is actually writing. Essays telling you what, what we're writing, but this is the subject. So writing is hard, right? It's not that essays is hard, writing is hard. In fact, you can tell because essays is plural, but this noun goes with a singular subject, so you know that actually writing has to be the subject. So we have subject and verb. Let's go ahead and go on to number two and identify subject and verb. So where's the verb? I would say all of this is the verb. Um, different people may say something different, but to me that's the whole verb. Has written, it's a perfect verb. Um, what's the subject? In English, the subjects come before verbs almost always. Um, number three, where's the subject? This was an adverb, so the, or sorry, where's the verb? Let's start with the verb. Uh, verbs are easiest because they have tense. So look for the word that has tense on it. Um, and then we have the subject here. What's the verb here? Verb, same subject, same verb here. Um, so once you have subjects and verbs, we can go on and, and look for more things. So in, 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 a, in uh, sentence number one, we could ask what part of speech is essays? Um, it should be, you should know this, this is a noun. Uh, so this is a noun. Why is it a noun? Well, it's got an S on it, it's a plural thing, and so uh, that's one sign of a noun. It's also the, the, uh, some sort of object of this word. This is a noun here, but it's actually uh, a noun that comes from a verb, otherwise known as a gerund. So in this case, it could have an object complement. Um, is, what else do we have here? Is hard, what's hard? Hard is an adjective, and very is modifying this adjective 
what modifies adjectives? Adverbs. So that's an adverb. Sentence number two, we have uh, a great essay. So essay, you might pick out as being a noun. What describes a noun? Let's say an adjective. A uh, is uh, an article or a determiner. I don't care what you call it. Um, so we'll just skip over that for now. The only other word we have here is fortunately. Fortunately uh, is modifying the whole sentence and it's got ly. So it really looks like an adverb. So let's call it an adverb. And in sentence four, what's easily? Let's start with easily. It's modifying this verb. What tends to modify verbs? Adverbs. It's also got ly on it. So let's call it an adverb. And here we have, um, we haven't talked about this, but you may have heard that these are, you may have heard of prepositional phrases. This is a preposition, um, and that's a noun. Uh, but don't worry about that too much. Maybe we'll talk about that later. All right, so if this was hard for you, you might want to watch it again or review uh, GB. Uh, oh, it's actually not in GB, but uh, you might want to go on online and look up some parts of speech. If you just search parts of speech English, you'll see lots of examples. Just keep in mind that people disagree about lots of uh, ideas about parts of speech. So stick to these four main categories, and I really want you to be able to understand uh, what they are. Uh, you could watch the video again. If this is really hard for you, come in and, and talk with me uh, during office hours. If this is easy, great, and uh, go on to the next video uh, next time. All right, so thanks. Bye.